So a little update here. We're retrofitting the Gerber 408. Nearly finished. So it's got the Maso control. And I'm just finishing up um, re-engineering the ball screw. So this is a new ball screw from THK to replace the old Gerber ball screw. And we've got a new, a new stepper motor on. And we've got, we have to re-engineer the, uh, the mounts and the plates here a lot. So this guy is new and it's, it's holding this nut here. And then we've got a, a, a driven nut assembly, so a pulley here attached to the motor below and the nut. The nut is enclosed, so we try to get a good, so when you rotate here, this whole assembly moves along. So there's a, a basically a pulley and then there's two two angular contact bearings mounted on top of the ball nut. Um, so that's how that works. And that will be mounted in here. In here underneath. So it'll be connected on one side and the other side and it will move the gantry forward and back. So that's replacing the old ball screw which was worn out. As you can see here, it's a different design of a ball screw. It's got see the two angular contact bearings and the nut at the end. Same principle. But this the reason this, this machine is being repaired is those two screws are uh, very worn. So you can see we've already done the, uh, the y-axis. So that's the end of the ball screw there. And then when we do here, again, that's the new uh, THK ball screw. Put a better view here. And you can see the nut here. But this time it isn't a driven nut. This time the screw rotates because it's a shorter screw, so we can rotate it from, this, from one side. So I'm just trying to... It's actually working now, so I'm just going to show you. You can see you rotate it from the end and the whole screw is twisted. So, we're getting there. Um, along with that then, what else have we got? We've got a Hitaco 4 kilowatt automatic tool chain spindle. So that's been retrofit for the old, um, you can see if I got the old motor here. There's a manual tool change. Manual tool change uh, came standard at the Gerber. So that's what we've got going on there. That's an automatic tool change, I saw 30. And that's um that's a really nice unit so that'll bring the, the machine up to spec. Uh, along with that spindle then we've had to also add risers here. Uh, quite easy to do, just basically uh riser blocks made out of aluminium. Uh, what else have we got then? Finally then the brains of the operation in, inside here. So you can see we've got a Delta VFT with Maso control. Maso is then controlling the, the drives here which drive the waters. And we've got a power supply on the top. And power conditioning here on the bottom right. They're all running out through here. And uh, with these systems we, we use a, a shielded grommet. So if you can see there it is there's actually little fingers in the grommet that touch off the shield of the cable. Um, it's, a, it's a very good way of shielding the cables. We find it to be very good anyway. And uh, that's, that block was just for aesthetics. We've got our, our air input there. So that's just a little update. That's, that's how the machine is going. It should be ready in about a week's time. So I'll give you another update when it's when it's ready. Okay, so just another update here on the Jarbar retrofit. So we've got the electrical panel there again. Haven't done anything since. Um, last time I updated, we were putting in the ball screw. So if you can see, the assembly here is installed. New ball screw. 
held on both sides. The motor there wired in. And what I just got to there was taping off the T-slots on the table here. Um, you can see the heat of spindle again. And what we just finally just lately did there was uh, cut some channel iron here. Aluminium. I think it's like 120 by 50. And installed it here. And we just 3D printed out some of these ISO 30 tool holders or the tool clamps. So the idea is to put 10 of them along there in the line. And that's held in place by, by T-nuts here and here. So it's coming along nicely. Got to do a lot of clean up, but nearly there. A little update on the jar bar. What I did last there was added four pins by drilling four holes. They're all in a square. See one, two, three, four. Then measured from this one to that one and this one to that one make sure the distance are make sure the distance is the same and uh they are so the machine is square that means that this axis is 90 degrees square with this axis so that's finished um we also added the uh, what's going to be the the vacuum board underneath here so this is going to have the grooves cut into it and um on top of that then there'll be a spoil board so that's there and ready for machining. Uh, also added this uh, toolbar. So it's just an aluminium channel. You can see we sealed up the old, um, the old uh, table. So there was lots of holes in this along there. So we just taped up the slots and um, uh, sealed, it, sealed in all the holes with paint. So we went a lot of layers of paint covering the holes. Um, and the plan, the plan is there, so if you can imagine the old system had uh, each track was its own valve so, and, and the track was about that wide running the full length of the table so they, they were effectively your zones so you only had long lines of zones so what I, what I proposed to do on this one was that this valve, because it's all sealed now, this valve will come along here and basically will cut a hole down through this and through the aluminium which will open up that valve to this area which I'll have zoned say for this half of the table so we'll have half of the table zoned to that valve or sorry this quarter should I say then we'll say this valve here is going to have the next quarter and then the same on the top two quarters with two different valves so basically he'll end up with a zoned uh, vacuum system by using the same valves and uh, just to show you how how this tool holder is working so we got these uh, 3d printed there's nuts there in the bottom and basically so basically that clicks on there and that's now an ISO 30 tool holder with a clamp and I just ran the CNC along drill these holes so basically um, basically the that's the way they'll go and you'll see it gives, gives clearance for the bit and um, there'll be a line of these along here like this and he'll end up with eight eight tools so yeah that should work out good enough anyway hopefully um, other than that not much progress so yeah so another little update here. We've just got the, uh, the vacuum hold down zones done on Fusion 360 here. Put on the mass off. And the machine is now putting them out.
final update on the Gerber retrofit. It's ready for delivery. Um, so that's the finished product. We did the, the vacuum zoned hole down that was made with the machine here itself. And how we did that was originally there was seven lines of suction vacuum areas, we call them, running from here to the very end in like channels. And the customer wanted six different zones, as you can see here. So how we did that was now the first three valves here. So this valve is basically connected through this hole. The next valve, next hole, next valve, last hole. So that's how I get the six different zones. Um, and that, that worked out pretty good. So just back on the machine there, that's a finished product. Touch screen, it's running Masso. Um, we put in an auto tool change rack with uh, these 3D printed parts holding the tool holders. And that's a, a four kilowatt or four and a half kilowatt ATC spindle from Hitico. Real high precision, uh, top quality part. So that's uh, one of the main features of this retrofit. Um, along with that, then there's, there's this um this probe for setting the material height so how that works is you m you move that manually down in front of the or on top of the work and the press a button on the control and the machine will come down and probe off of that sensor and then the machine will know what the the top of the work height is so that's a, a great feature there and then there's a similar probe here which is acting as the tool setter so every time you add a tool or break a tool or, or replace a tool, um, the machine will come and reference the tool height automatically. Um, this machine then has, we have to alter the covers to take the larger motors. Um, so there's closed loop stepper motors in this machine and they're working perfectly adequate for this machine, if not uh, overkill. Uh, they're 12 Newton meter units. Uh, you can see this is, uh, a panel that we made up just to kind of give the back of the machine a better finish. He's got a kind of a work surface here now. Um, and you can see on the side of that, the air intake. That's where the air intake goes, goes into the panel and the way that works. Inside that black panel then is all the connections into the electrical panel. So they're coming out through grommets and going back. So it's, we found it a tidy way of uh, of hiding all of that so um, yeah that's it from the outside very pleased with how it turned out and just to show you the finished product of the electrical panel so this is um, the electrical panel the shielded cables running out to the machine components um so yeah that works pretty good and you can't see any of them out here because of this black panel as i said so just to run through the actual elect electrical panel then we've got uh on the top here we've got three power supplies these are branded power supplies um so they're good quality we've got a, a fan for cooling we've got our relay boards attached to the maso and then the maso gives information to the spindle VFD, which is here, it's Delta VFD. And it also gives information to the stepper drivers, the three of them which are here. And all this stuff gets powered by the bottom right-hand corner, which is 24 volt power supply, uh, 24 volt contact for the drive enable uh, feature that's needed for safety. So that, that contact is powering on and off the drives through uh it's basically acting like a relay for maso then you've got the power inputs here so we've got three phase on the bottom right hand side coming in and uh distribution there um so it's pretty basic yeah so i'll close it up again um i'd like to also say that their stepper motors have all been changed 
as well as we've put in new thk ball screws on all axes um ball nuts so serious machine ready for work